um, middle, and then so. So that's why it's much easier when you have the pink. Because yeah. usually I just I just think of it like uh, the radius would always be like the equation, the function given. Or is that wrong to think of it that way? What do you mean the function given? Like so here, like this. Only by that one, because you have an enclosed region by two by two equations. The second one doesn't play anything. Um, Maybe in this case, right? Uh -huh. Why? So that's why I think yeah, you're right because it's better to graph it to see. Um, because this is just the y-axis, right? x equals zero. Um, right. When I ask you a question, you don't ask me a question. Okay, let's draw the graph again, all right? Mm -hmm. So let's say this is a two. This is a one. Yeah. All right. So let's figure out. So can you figure out the, what do you call it, the vortex? The vortex? Yeah. Okay, let's figure out the vertex. Because with the vertex, then we can draw this picture. We can draw the more accurate picture. So the vertex is one um one. Great. Good job. Okay, so we have this point. Now the graph is what we need. So can you shade the region then rotate around y axis? Nice. Okay, so when you rotate with the y-axis, what kind of uh, uh, picture you have? Uh, like a cylinder? Well, draw, just draw the 3D object. Just try, it. try to draw the 3D object. Like Something like this, like a cone. Why? No, so you have this no. region, right? You rotate this piece of region along y-axis. Just try yourself, right? You have this piece, mm -hmm. try to move your hand, rotate around y-axis. So would it be like this? I don't know. When you rotate along y-axis, you should get a symmetric region on the other side of y-axis. Oh, you. Oh, okay. I you meant. I thought you said draw the three D. So I was drawing it like that. 
Well, then you can picture this 3D like this, right? What's the horizontal intersection? So now you have a 3D picture, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you won't get a, uh, a cylinder or a cone or anything. You just have this ball like. Okay, now, so the purpose of this to, to, to help you to explain how do you get radius to be 2y minus y squared. So now can you explain why your radius is 2y minus y squared? Yeah, so since this and this, it goes to this, so it goes to this equation right here. I mean, this function, right? It goes to this function. So from here to here will be the radius. And since it touches this equation, and this equa uh, function is 2y minus y squared. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Malika, look okay. at these pictures, right? You see the intersection horizontal. If we cut this 3D object, horizontally, we call the section. If we cut through this 3D object, mm -hmm. we get a section. So those sections are perfect circles, right? Okay. So the idea of finding this volume is to add all this area of the circles. So you see you have dy, right? You have yeah. this from A to B. So we're cutting along y-axis. We're cutting along y-axis. And the sections are circles. They just have different radius. So do you see the radius? What's the radius? It's just a look at one circle. That's a radius. So this would be the radius right here. Right? You only see this half of that. So compare this with your radius here. So you claim the radius is 2y minus y squared. Now can you explain why your radius is 2y minus y squared? So this is your region, right? Remember this is your region. Remember this is your R. The book says this is your R, right? Oh, which one? I can't see. I'm sorry in the graph. Minus R left. Remember in the oh, okay. Let me see now. Right, R right minus minus R left, right? So you have this. That's x equals to two y minus y square. And what's your R left? It's this one, right? X equals okay. zero. Because this is a special one, because x equals 0. Sometimes you don't get x equals 0. You may get x equals something else. So if, let's say if uh, you get um, x equals 1, so you would, and then you would get, have x equals 2y minus y squared, you would subtract it. So you would do 2y minus y squared minus x, um, 1 equal to the power of 2. That's what we learned, right? Okay. So the radius, if right, if we can write x as a function in terms of y, the formula is r right, the radius, the the radius on the left, on the right, subtract on the left. All right. Okay. I hope the rest of you are listening. You know, we know how to do it. The more importantly, we know how, we know why, why we do this way. All right. Cool. Thank you, Malika. Yeah, I got, it. I got it now. Thank you so much for your explaining. Thank okay, you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, next one.
Okay, I see someone's work. The team, Carlos. Carlos, is this yours? Thirteen. I see thirteen here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I it just I couldn't see it at first. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so we asked the question: Is the region enclosed by the given curves? It's rotated about the specific line. Find the volume of the resultant line. And here I forgot it's about the. Um, sorry, Carlos, is rotated by which line? About the uh, x axis. Axis. Oh, about x axis. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, right, I forgot to include that. Okay, first I graph my um, I graph everything, so I was able to see what I need to do, and this is. No, you uh, enclose the region, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so this is uh, our line, and we ask the um, we have to give us x equals one and x equals two, so this is our uh, region that we have to find. So we graph the uh, we take the uh, pi radius to the second power, so we substitute uh, by 1 over x. And then we uh, we uh, we factor, and then we get uh, 1 over x to the second power. And then now we have to uh, find the volume. But we know that it starts from 1 to 2. And we have pi times 1x to the second power dx. So we have to find the Antiderivative. Antiderivative for the uh, one x to the second power over second power. It's a uh, one. My I'm sorry, negative one over x. So we we plug in the number. We get pi, and now we have to substitute for uh, two and one. And I get uh, um, and before that we put a uh, pi to the left. We get negative one and a half minus minus negative one, and I get a uh, pi one and a half, and then we just multiply with pi. So the answer is pi over two. Okay, but well, I see some of you like to do this way, to think, okay, I have a, so I have, I want to, so the volume is a 3D dimension quantity. So I need to find the integral I'm treating as area. So that's why, so colors here, finding the area. So this is a two dimension, two dimension area. Then multiply by third dimension. Third dimension is cut along x axis. Well, that's okay. But, uh, um, but, it, but basically is to understand we're cutting along x axis because we're rotating along x axis. We're cutting along x axis. Then we add up all the areas of this circle. All the areas of the circle. All right, Carlos, just explain to me, to us, why the radius is a, why the radius is one over x. One over x. Isn't it the uh, they said that we have to take like a small part of the, uh, like at the disk. Right. Can you draw to okay. show us? Yeah. Um, well, the way I saw it, it was like uh, they take the radius and they, they take like a small part of this. And then we have to add multiple ones. But can you just draw the radius? Yeah, okay. I think you're drawing a circle. Great. So like, that's what I understood when they asked for about the radius. Okay, yeah, good. You're doing right. So this radius. So can you explain us how do you get that radius to be one over x? Uh, it's right on here. We always take the uh, equation, the uh, line of the equation. Right. So you are seeing this top curve. So this curve here. Is a part of one over x, right? Yeah. Okay. Then minus minus here. So sometimes I ask you to explain. And you need to see why, because that gives you restrictions. You have four equations to work with, and the one is y equals one over x. Another one is y equals zero. Where is y equals zero? 
it's a uh, there. This is our um, I'm sorry. Why is there? It's this one. Sorry. Y equals to zero. What is Y? What does a Y equals to zero mean? We set an app equal to each other to find the points. What do you mean? Set so which two equal to each other? Uh, one over X and Y equals zero. Why do we have to do that? Will one over X ever be zero? No. No, usually, right? Usually, sometimes maybe we need to do to find the, find the enclosed region by two equations. But here, we don't have to do that. Because we have x1 and x2. Exactly. We're given these two. Yes, they're giving us already the air. Right. So now you have y equals 1 over x, which is this line, right? Which is this top, which is this top part of this. But where is y equals zero? Because your object is restricted, your region is restricted with this four. You have x equals one, you have x equals two, you have this one over x, where is y equals zero? y equals zero? Okay. Right, this one, y equals zero. It will be here, I put an arrow. So what is it? It's a, uh, put an arrow. So that will be our y equals zero. Right. So just draw this, right? That's x axis. Yeah. Every point, y value is zero on x axis. So your y, if you want to draw over here, is here. So that's why your radius is the top curve, one over x minus zero. That's how you get this. Okay, now. Uh, how did you get the upper limit, lower limit of the integration? Uh, it's given to us. Okay, that's it. Great. All right. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next one. Fifteen. Rate fifteen. All right, hello, yeah, go ahead. All right, so um, uh, in this one, x minus y equals one, and the uh, y equals x squared minus four x plus three about y x uh y equals three. So first, I find the x volume. So uh. I write x minus y equals 1 to y equals x minus 1. So I set them equal, and uh, I find out uh, uh, x is 1 and 4. Uh, so the outer uh, radius is going to be uh, y equals 3, so 3 minus uh, the x squared minus 4x plus 3, which I got 4x minus x squared. The inner radius is uh, 3 minus uh, x minus 1 equals 4 minus x. I switched the position, but it's the same. Um, so um, then we use pi integral 1, um, one to 4. Uh, big R square minus small r square uh, dx. So I plug in uh, 4x minus x square, square minus x, uh, 4 minus x square. And uh, I got um, x x to the fourth power minus uh, ax uh, cube plus fifteen uh, x square plus ax minus sixteen x dx. And uh, uh, I'm plugging uh, uh, one and four, so the answer is one one zero eight over five. After all the work, Hi. Okay, Ray, okay, can you draw the um? Can you draw the, um, the other side, other region, the symmetric region? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Wait a second. So we need up. This. Nice. Okay. All right. Now, can you explain to us why your big R? Oh, let me. Okay. Yeah, but with this, with this join graph, explain one more time to us the big R and small R. Uh, so, uh, big R is from uh, y equals. So this line is uh, y equals three. So big R is from this one all the way up to uh, uh, the equation that have, is this one. So x squared minus 4x plus 3. So I use uh, 3 minus this equation. And I got uh, 4x minus x squared. And small, small r is from here to the uh, x minus 1 equals 1. This, uh, this equation, that is small r. And uh, I use 3 minus uh, x minus 1 equals 4 minus x. Great. All right, anybody has any questions with this? Right, so that's why I ask you to draw a picture because these kind of questions, it'll be difficult to figure out. But once you draw a picture, the big R, small R is obvious. All right, thank you, Ray. All right, thank you. All right, next one. Okay, so this is this is a sixteen. Can everyone see the screen? Yeah. Okay, so we're asked to find the region enclosed by the given curves rotated about a specific line and to find a volume. So the given functions are x equals y squared and x equals one about x equals one. And so the first thing that you have to do is find it's find the bounds of the integral. And you can do so by setting them equal to each other. So we get y squared equals 1. So it's either 1 to um, negative 1. And so we use symmetry to integrate 0 to 1 and then multiply by 2. And so the area, to get to, to the volume, the area of a disk is a equals pi times the radius squared. And so the area would be pi times 1 minus y squared squared. Then we input this into the volume equation. And we get 2 pi times the integral of 0 to 1 times 1 minus 2y squared plus 4y plus yeah plus 4y squared times dy. And so we get that we find the antiderivative and then evaluate at the antiderivative. And so we get volume equals 2 times pi times y minus 2y to the third over 3 plus y to the fifth over 5. And then we evaluate at 1 and 0. And so once we do that, we get the volume equal to 2 pi times 1 minus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 5. And that's the same thing as 2 pi times a over 15. And so the volume would equal 16 pi over 15. Okay, um, the same question. I see you draw your region here. Can you explain to us your region? Then try to draw the 3D object. Yeah, let me draw the, so do you want me to explain how I got the radius and then draw the 3D mm -hmm. object? Yeah, draw how okay. you get the region first. How you get right. the region and then try to draw the 3D object. Okay, so the radius would be this here. I don't know if you could see it. Let me change the color. Is that better? Yeah, explain so how you get that would the be the radius. So the radius we find by the right function minus the um, left function. And so the right function is x equals 1. And then the left function would be x equals y squared. And so we know that we have to do 1 minus y squared to get the radius of the whole function. And so to get the radius of the whole object. And then the object would look like this. Can everyone see the yellow line there? Yeah. And let me use another color to indicate the circle. So that would be, okay, that's not showing, sorry. Let me use another color. Can everyone see that? So that would be the circle of the, that's how it would look. Oh, the 3D oh, object. I don't, I don't know if other people can say, I cannot see your circle. So you oh, are thinking okay. about the x equals to the one, right? 
Yes. Oh, yes. Now I see it. Oh, sorry. I don't know why it cleared. I see. Okay. Looks good. It's great. Yes. Okay. So is, am I done presenting or? Yeah. So everybody's clear, right? Let me, let me draw for her. Sorry. Let me just pull it up again. So that's the other side, right? And that would be the circle of the thing. Right. Right. Then the radius is just just this. That's that's how you get right one minus y square. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Uh thank you, Ruli. Thank you. Okay. If anyone has any questions, feel free to stop. Okay, next one. Uh, okay, Professor, it's Amir here. Okay. So for the question, we're told to find the volume of a frustum of a right circular cone with height h, lower base radius capital R, and top radius lowercase r. So what I first did was I um, drew a graph to visualize it. And then um, what I did was I assigned some points. So I, I put A at the origin. Then I also made a B. And then the distance from here to here, that would be R. Um, okay. And then um, what I did was I made a C. And what we would do is we would connect it. And then we also have to remember we have a capital R also. So our distance from here to here, that would be our capital R. And then what we would do is we would draw this shape. So it would look something like this. And then we also know that the distance between our two radiuses, well, let me be clear, this, this right over here is R. I didn't need this. And then our distance from here, from our radiuses, that would be our H. So then what we can do from here is we can use the point slope formula to find um, our radius. So, so let me write that. Oh yes, let me also label that um in this case our um not our A. Our B would be zero comma R because we're just increasing by R. And then our C would be H comma R um capital R. So from here our Y our point slope intercept formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 and all we would do is use these two points to um find the radius so I mean, what i did yeah, he um, yes. you, what does the big r represent um the big r right um that will represent the lower base radius, right, Professor? Yeah. Can you, do you see the uh, question? See it the question. States in the question, Professor. Yeah, look at the question 32. Then you'll see. So he flipped the, the 3D object. So I'm just going to solve this equation quickly while you're telling. So y minus r is equal to, let's see, capital R minus lowercase r over h, that's the change in the x, 
times x minus 0. So then if you were to add r on both sides, we will get y is equal to r minus r over h. I mean capital R minus lowercase r over h, and then we would have here um, times x plus r. And then all we would need to do from here is use our dis method. So that's um that'd be pi r squared. So um, we would have here the volume is equal to pi times the definite integral from h to zero. And then we would have here what we just solved for capital R minus lowercase r over h times x plus r. And then what we could do from here is, in order to um, integrate this, what we could do is we could use u substitution. So if we say that our u over here is equal to r minus r over hx plus r, Oh, yes, I forgot. Um, we also need um, a dx right over here. So u is equal to capital R minus lowercase r over h x plus r. And du, our derivative, that would be equal to capital R minus lowercase r over h times dx. So all we do from here is we use u substitution. So then we would have here, our volume is equal to pi. Um, Oh yes, also one other thing, when we're using it, we also have to um, change our limits, our upper bound and our lower bound. So just to solve for that quickly, our A would be equal to capital R minus lowercase r. This is our A right over here, this zero. Over H times zero. plus r, lowercase r. So when we solve this, we'll get our new lower bound limit is lowercase r. And then we'll do the same thing for this h over here. So our b is equal to capital R minus lowercase r over h times h plus lowercase r, these two cancel out, and then um, also these two cancel out, so we'd be left with just capital R. And then we would um, write our u's, which is u squared du, this is our u. Oh yes, I forgot, um, pi r squared, we need a squared u. So u squared, and then du. And all we would do from here is integrate. So we have here our volume is equal to, oh yes, I forgot. And we also, um, outside of here, we need eight pi times h times capital R over, yes, so pi h over capital R minus lowercase r. And then to um, find the antiderivative u cubed over 3. So then we can make this high h over capital R minus lowercase r. 
and then we would have here one third u cubed and we would just evaluate this at capital R and lowercase r and when we actually do that what we get here is v is equal to pi h over 3 times r minus r And then this would be multiplied by capital R cubed minus lowercase r cubed. And we know that this right over here is a difference of cubes. So we could um, factor out a r minus r here. So then we have your volume equals pi h. Over three times capital R minus lowercase r. And then we'll have your capital R minus lowercase r times capital R squared plus capital R times lowercase r plus r squared. And then these two will cancel out, and our final answer would be volume is equal to pi h over 3 times r squared, capital R squared, plus capital R times lowercase r, plus r squared. Case R square. This is our answer. Okay, that's a lot. Um, so yeah, the, the, more the board is really small, so I can't really make it that. Okay. Any question? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Amir. Thank you, Professor. All right. Next one. Can you see that? Yeah. So this question was really simple. Um, they gave you the equations y equals zero, y equals cosine squared x, and then they gave you the limits, right? And there isn't really much to do. There's only the area from uh, from cosine squared x, and that's limited on the bottom by y equals zero. So they give you the limits. So all you have to do that is put that in the limits, negative pi over two and pi over two, and then since the radius is only the y value of cosine squared x, right? All, that's the only equation that you have to put in uh, for r. And after that, you can just use the uh, the symmetry rule, which gives the bounds as uh, zero to pi over two, and just put two in the front. And then you and then uh, the question says to put the equation into your calculator and then find the find the answer to the fifth decimal, I think. And then I just put it into my calculator and it says 3.70110. Hmm. Okay, so you integrate this. You mean you integrate this whole thing with the calculator? Oops. Yeah, that's what the that's what the question says to do. Ask for. Hmm? Okay. I said you said that you integrate you you integrate this with the calculator? 
Yes, that's what the question asked me to do. I see. Okay, because we didn't learn how to integrate this cosine. Yeah, what? that's why I said calculator, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can ask any questions. Yeah, just like you said, this is a very simple question. If you're, um, okay, actually, hand in to see this one, to see if you have any questions. Because this is a very simple one. If, uh, so this is like Karen. Henry, if you think this chapter is a totally confusing, maybe you can start with simple questions like this. You can ask Karen some questions. Oh, I see. Okay, all right, thank you, Karen. Next one. Good morning, can you see morning. my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. So I did um, 22A, and so we're given, I have a pointer here, uh, we're given these uh, functions and we're rotating about the x-axis. So Hold on, um, below I drew the graph. Function. The first one is function, is the second function? I heard you're seeing it, it's like given one? functions. Is the second yeah, one? These two. Um, the no. first one is a function, right? The first one is a function, so we'll have y equals x squared. What about the second one? Second one would be a circle. It wouldn't be a function because... Right, let's call it equations. Equation. Okay. Right, let's call it equations. Okay. And so we're also given y is greater than or equal to zero, so I had only drawn the upper portion where y is positive value. And rotating about the x-axis and um, I decided to put everything in terms of y so here um, I found I solved inter I've solved for y and we're given positive or minus square root of 1 minus x squared and I'm not sure if I'm correct but I believe I, I had taken the positive value because y would be greater than uh, 0 so well, you can show up that you are right and see oh. your shaded your region right yeah, I did. And then um, I graphed these, um, and then I found the intersection points, which would be from negative to positive 0 0.786. So then um, the integral would be from these two points, pi, and I know that the radius is the upper function, in this case, the upper function um, minus the lower function, upper function squared minus the lower function squared dx. And then from here, I just um, distributed the the squared so that I wouldn't have um, the squared here anymore. And then I found the antiderivative after that, right here. After I found the antiderivative, I solved for um, the the value of the function at positive zero point seven eight six subtracted by the value of the function at negative zero point seven eight six. And then after um, solving for that, I had gotten a decimal, but then I had converted that into a fraction, which would have been 141 over 125 pi. And that was my final answer. Okay, let's ask Haney. Haney, do you have any questions with this? So this region is bounded by those three, two equations and one inequality. If you have any questions, you may ask uh, Alexandra. Okay, Amir is asking, do you need decimal places in the first? Well, I'm about to ask Alexandra a question, actually. Um, Alexandra, tell us, how do you get this upper bound, lower bound of this integration? Upper bound, lower bound. Oh, well, I knew that it was rotating about the x-axis. 
so um, I knew that it reflected off, it would look something like this. And to find the radius, it would be upper function subtracted by a lower. Um, you're talking about this radius here. Yes. Right. I'm talking about this 0 0.786 and negative oh. 0 0.786. So I would set um, I would set equal x squared would be equal to positive square root of one minus x squared to find oh. the intersection points. Would you like to try here? Because this is important to show these two points. Can you show on the side of the screen? Um, I could try, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll be x squared, oh, x squared equals positive square root of 1 minus x squared. So I believe from here we would start by squaring both sides. Yes, the radius is in the first bracket. And then you would square both sides. But he needs to think about, okay, you may get confused about before we would have a pi of r minus, big r minus small r squared. That's to have a solid. But here we have a hollowed. So here you see we have a big big r squared minus a small r squared. So that might, might cause confusion also. Because we want to get rid of this hollow, we only want the solid. That's why mm -hmm. we may have a pi of r minus small r, then print it in the square. That's for a solid without a hollow, hollow, hollow in it. Mm -hmm. So this one, you see we have a hollow. Okay, anyway, keep going, Alexandra. Mm -hmm. So this would be with x squared, 1 minus x squared, and then from here, I'm not sure what to do from here. Then how do you get 0 0.786 then? I had graphed it. Um, oh, I see. Well, let's let's try this. Move them to one side. Move the three terms. Oh, okay. Remember so the equations? Yeah, so this would be the Okay, now think about y equals to x squared. So I substitute. Right. Um, the y equals to x squared. Just temporarily, right? Then you see a quadratic equation, right? Right. So. It would be 1 minus y instead of x squared minus x to the fourth. And so from no, no, here, no, no. Could, um, x squared. So x raised by 4, you want to change to be y, right? In terms of y. If y equals x squared, what's oh. x raised by 4? So it would be y squared because. Right. Now you have a quadratic equation to solve. And you know how to solve a quadratic equation, right? Factor, I believe. Yeah. 
how to resolve this quadratic equation. Why you change this to be one minus x squared? Oh, sorry, I'm wrong. You have a zero equals one minus y, right? Minus y squared. Now you have a quadratic equation. Right? You have one minus y minus y squared. This is a quadratic equation, right? Mm. Right. So um, that I could factor. Can you factor this? I don't think that this is factable. No, I can't. But if it's not factable, what are some other methods we can use? Oh, um. It was, it would be uh, negative positive b squared, square root, there's a formula for it. Yeah, the quadratic formula. Right, do you like to try that? Um, sure, good try. Y would be negative one. C is one. Okay, um, I don't think you will have time for this. Yeah, but I mean, if I were to solve this for both um So my purpose of doing that is uh, we won't be able for 150 exam, for 250 exam, we won't be able to use graphing calculator. So the answer should be, and we want for calculus, we don't want to estimate with decimals. We want the exact value. So when we use the quadratic formula, or we can complete in square, we would get this equals to uh y equals x squared x squared right so when we square root we get a plus minus square square root of this uh okay anyway but the final exam it won't be this complicated okay it won't be this okay. complicated but the main purpose i pointed out this is we won't be able, for the final exam, we won't be able to use, well, well, let me not see that. Okay, anyway, because now it's, everything's different. All right, okay, so, all right, so make sure you know how to solve quadratic equations. That's, that's the very basic stuff in mathematics. All right, thank you, Alexandra. Thank you. Okay,
Send you 18. Angel, we see your work, 18. Angel, we cannot hear you. Are you speaking? Hello? Oh, yeah, we can hear you now. Uh, okay. So, for this question, we were asked to find the volume of the resulting solid after rotating the functions about this y equals 1. So I draw the graph here and then the solid in the right. So first I find the cross-sectional area of one washer, which is equal to pi times outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. The outer radius is equal to one minus x which is from here to here. And then the inner radius is equal to um, one minus radical x, which is from here to here. So the radius will be this. And then on the right, I Solve for the points of intersection to find the lower limit and the upper limit. I set the functions equal I set yeah, I set the function equal to each other and square both sides. And simplify, so I got x equal zero for the lower limit and x equals one to for the upper limit. And then for the volume, I yeah, it was just equal to the integral of the area evaluated from zero to one. And then the, <clears throat> sorry, the integrand this time will be the area, which is pi times one minus two x cubed plus x to the six minus one minus two radical x plus x. And that simplifies to negative two x to the third plus x to the six plus Two radical x minus x. And then I take the constant out. And found the antiderivative using the power rule for antiderivative. The antiderivative would be negative x to the fourth over two plus x to the seventh over seven plus four over three radical x to the third minus x squared over two. And evaluate that from one and from zero to one, and then I simplified negative one half plus one over seven plus four over three minus one half, and found ten over twenty one. So the final answer will be ten over twenty one, or ten pi over twenty one. Okay. Anybody has any question? Any, do you have any question? Okay, I have one question. Uh, Angel, can you explain here from this step? Let me use my... So from this step to this, you have x times x raised by five minus one equals zero. How do you get conclude x equals zero, x equals one? Um, do you want me to draw it? I need to write the solution. I'm sorry? Do you want me to write the solution on the screen? Uh, yeah, I'm asking how do you get, right, x equals zero probably is obvious. How do you mm -hmm. x equals the one? Can you explain to us um, how do you factor x raised by five minus yeah, one? So I, yeah, so I did x minus five equals 
to zero. Are you able to see what I'm doing in writing? Oh, uh, yeah. And then x to the fifth equals one. Then I take the fifth root on both sides and found x to be equal to one. Great. Someone is asking you a question. Can x be negative one? How would you answer that? Can x um, no, because the fifth root of negative one would be negative one. Good job. Okay. Yeah, because this x raised by five, five is an odd number. That's only for odd x raised by five, x raised by one, x raised by three, x raised by seven. If it's odd, when we do the odd root, we only get one solution. So x equals the one. But if we get x squared equals the one, if the exponent is an even number, we would get a plus minus one. Good job, Angel. Let me see. Uh, anybody has any questions? Oh, one more, one more question. Uh, Angel, can you draw? So this is a 3D object. So this. Mm -hmm. Can you draw the solid part, the only volume we're looking for? Mm -hmm. Or the hollow part? Because here again, we see pi r squared, big r squared, minus pi small r squared. So that means this 3D object has a solid part, has a hollow part. So we need to find the volume of um, the outside one, subtract the volume of the inside one, to so get the volume of the solid part only. Good job. Great. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Angel. Thank you. So for this question, we had y equals x and y equals x e1 minus x divided by 2. So I set them equal to each other. x equal to x e1 minus x divided by 2 and moved um, x e1 minus x to the 2 over to the other side and factored and got x1 minus e 1 minus e 1 raised to the 1 minus x over 2. And I set both of those equal to 0. And one of my x's was um, 0, and the other one was 2. Then I can evaluate from 0 to 2. So, and then I graphed um, the equations, both of them, and and then I rotated about um, y equals 3. So big R would be the outer one radius. So the outer function, which is the green, y equals x to, to, to 3. So, and then the little one would be the outer uh, inner radius, y equals x e1 minus x over 2 to 3 so that's why i did 3 minus um both of those functions then i used the washer method since um there's a hollow space in between so pi from uh, um, evaluated from z integral from 0 to 2 3x squared minus 3 minus 3 3 minus 1 raised to um, 1 minus x divided by 2 squared dx. And then I used the calculator to evaluate the integral and got 9.82476. All right. We could leave the answer like this, this is exact. 24 yeah. years minus this. OK. Um, it's, okay, you see, so y equals 3, I draw a line for you, right? Mm -hmm. So how would you change your, your picture a little bit? I would just shift it up a little bit more because it's not exact. Yeah. Right, right. And then also for like the integral, I forgot to put the e. Yeah, for like the inner. Right, right, right. Right, so that's actually e raised by. Okay, anybody has any question? 
Yeah, like this, you use a different color to represent, right? So easier to see, okay, this is the solid, this is the region. We rotate, like the case I said, you know, we need to move this piece a little bit up. Or we can change the three. Maybe we said, okay, three. Maybe we set this y equals a three. It has to be symmetric. All right, all right, good, Kaiser. Thank you. Anybody else? Did we finish? Oh, Julia, right? Julia. And Jason. Okay. So we're trying to find the volume by rotating area enclosed by y equals x cubed and y equals radical x about x equals y. First, we know that we're rotating about x equals 1, so it's the y-axis. So we uh, try to find x. So I, uh, I got x equals y to the 1 third and x equals y squared. After, we have to find the... Uh, the intersection point so we set x squared equals to y to the one third power here so i multiply both exponent by three and got y to the six powers equals y and then i subtract y from the, the other side to set it to uh, zero and then i factor out y so y times y to the fifth power minus one so for the y, uh, for the upper and lower limit, I got 1 and 0. And then, and then I start uh, making the integral. So I set the upper bound and lower bound to 1 and 0. And then, well, first we know the big radius is r, which is 1. And then to, to find the first radius, we subtract it by um, y equals radical x. So it's basically, well, y, y squared, because I set it equal to uh, x. So 1 minus y squared and 1 minus y to the 1 third power. So I plugged in pi r squared for each. So pi times 1 minus y squared to the well, squared minus pi 1 minus y to the 1 third power squared, the y. And then I FOIL the, both the function. So I got 1 minus 2y squared plus y to the fourth minus parentheses 1 minus 2y to the 1 third plus y 2 third power. And then I found the antiderivative 1 to y, negative 2y squared, so negative 2y cubed over 3 plus y to the fifth over 5 minus y plus y, 6y to the 4 over 3 minus, or divided by 4 minus 3y to the 5 over 3 divided by 5. So first, I well, you could cancel out y and negative y. I did that after I plugged it in. And uh, y to the fifth over over five minus three y to the, well, uh, what's going on? I'll forget about that. So I plugged in one to over three plus 1 over 5, plus 3 over 2, over 3 over 5. Oh, it was, it was these two. Oh, 
out of these two. So I subtracted 1 over 5 minus 3 over 5 first. So I got negative 2 over 5. So I got 3 over 2 minus uh, 2 over 5 minus 2 over 3. So I found the common denominator, which is 30. So 45 over 30 minus 12 over 30 minus 20 over 30. I got 13 over 30 and multiply by pi. So the answer is 13 over 30 pi. Okay, I think some people have some questions or comments. All right, I think the questions are being answered. All right, anybody has any questions for Jason? Okay, I have a question. Jason, can you draw the other, when you rotate with x equals to 1, is it? So, the other piece. Right. Yeah, so. Right. So this makes it obvious, right? You see the 3D and we cut. So Jason draws horizontal lines, means we're cutting, we're cutting the 3D object horizontally. Then the section are circles, and section are circles. But those circles have different radius. Radius depends on those two functions even. All right, sometimes, okay, I want to see one thing. Sometimes when we explain things, let's call, let's call the mathematical term the, the, the actual term. Okay, what do we call this? Uh, one minus y squared, Jason was saying, you know, foil this function. No, it's not foil the function, foil the expression. So mathematically, basically, so far, we could use three terms. We use expressions. So anything in mathematics does not has, have an equal sign, we call them expressions. So foil those expressions. Then simplify those expressions. Then we can talk about equation, right? Let's say x equals y squared. That's not a function. You know, just by convention, it's just by convention. If you want to argue with me, oh, that, that is a function, function of x in terms of y. Well, let's just go by convention. Go by convention means x equals y squared. I won't be able to write down y equals to, uh, you know, one expression. If I want to write y equals, I have to write y equals plus minus square root of x, right? That give me two functions. We call them equations. So anything with the equal sign, we call them equations. Well, under equations, we have some we have special family, we call them functions. It means that this equation we can write as a function of y in terms of x. Um, so, right, so, you know, expressions, equations, or sometimes we have inequalities and functions. All right, okay, good job, Jason. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Have we done? Julia, right? Okay. All right. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry, it's it's loading in. Um, let's see, it's taking a minute. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, so um, I was, I don't know, I'm kind of confused by this topic, but what I did was um, so the question was x squared plus four y squared equals four. Okay, can you, y equals two. Like, can you imagine this equation? What, what's the picture of this equation? X squared plus 4y squared equals 4. So it's on the right. It's like this oval shape. Great. Yes. And so I didn't draw it, but above, it would be above y equals 2. So it would be 
uh, between 3 and 5, and it would have the same length from negative 2 to 2. Um, so on the left, I calculated y. So I got y equals 1 minus x over 2. And so then I plugged that in to um, the sigma equation, the sigma equation, and so it would be pi 1 hold minus on, x. Hold on a second, uh, Julia. What do you mean sigma equation? What's that? I mean the, um, not the sigma, but just um, to calculate the volume equation. Uh-uh. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, let's, let's look at this. So you rewrite this you, you rewrite this equation into y squared equals to one minus x squared divided by four. That's okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. So now how do you get it from this step to the next step? Y equals to one minus x divided by two. Uh so you just do the square root of when you square that root. Person. Right. When you square root, you get that? You sure? I'm not agreeing with you. I don't agree with you. <laughs> Um, well, let's square this. Well, let's square one minus one minus x divided by two to see if we get back to one minus x squared divided by four. Can you square this term? The foil. Can you foil? Right. Yeah. So. Y it would you would have to basically multiply it to itself right so what would you get so then it would be um one uh minus so this might be easy i'm ready mm -hmm. out for you yeah it might be easier for you to foil it so it's this one minus x divided by two times one minus x divided by two. Yeah, so it would be one and then minus x over two and then again minus x over two plus x squared over four. Okay, can you simplify it? And then, so that's one uh, minus two x over two. Plus two x over two. Can you simplify that? So x, so just x. Just x. So this equals to one minus x plus x squared over four. X squared over four. So now, do you see your mistake? Yeah. Yeah, I see it. So you won't be able to do this, right? This is wrong. Right. Okay. So then. But then, when you square root, what do you get? A square root of what? The original? Right. So you want a square root of y squared, right? Yeah. What do you really get when you square root? Would it just all be under the square root? Because you yeah. can't get a definite answer? Exactly. So you would get all under the square root and mm -hmm. something else. Is something else. So this indicates a positive term, right? Mm -hmm. so square root. Would you have to do plus minus? You get plus minus. You get two terms. Because when you square a negative term, it gets positive also, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now this is the new one to work with. You want to keep going? Um, then just one question. How would you put the both of them, the plus minus, into this volume equation then? Okay. So this is the about the y equals the 2, right? We want to rotate this equation or this uh, ellipse about the y equals the 2. So you have this y equals the 2. Right. Right. So when we rotate it, can you draw the other piece, the symmetric piece? Um, well, it would just be like over 
here between three and five. Right, it would be a little bit there up, right? It would be a little, yeah, more up. There's not enough space. Right. Then can you try to draw the 3D object? Um, it would kind of just be like that, like. No, the circle has to be a little bit, a little bit bigger, right? Right. The circle has to be. So when we cut along y axis, the intersection are circles, right? So we, mm -hmm. we would cut it this way. Oh, okay. Right? So the intersections are circles. Mm -hmm. So now let's see yours. So do you have from A to B? All right. Explain to us how do you get the lower limit three, upper limit five, mm -hmm. and then change your radius. Um. Well, then wouldn't you just plug in what we calculated, the plus minus square root? Right. That's how you change your radius, right? You change your radius to be the square root of the term. Right. Explain to us at first. How do you get lower limit to be three, upper limit to be five? Um, well, how did I get that? Yeah. So, well, I just kind of looked at the original ellipse, um, and I kind of just did it by hand. So I see that the upper limit is one over here. So when you flip it over, on this side, you it's a whole unit space. So over here it would so then this is so one and two and then a whole space it would be three. And then again, when you just look at the original ellipse, there's two unit spaces between upper and lower, so it would be the same. So then it would be three and five. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense because we just don't show it. So this, right? So this would be three, this would be four, and your picture actually starts from here, your ellipse. Yeah. Right, will be here. So this is your three. So this, the upper part of this ellipse would be five. That's, a, that's the real picture you have, right? Yeah. Uh, You, you know what, um, you have to redo this one, all right? You see your 3D object is start from here. Right. Right. So, so I just still don't really get how to plug in the square root into this. Okay, so let's just start from the very beginning. Let me give other people a chance. So anybody wants to show 21A? Okay, so Hini has a question here. So wash your method is for when you have two different radius? Um, we'll talk about that. Okay, we'll talk about that. Let's see. Anybody else wants to get credit for 21A? Okay, if not, anyone else wants to show something else? So if Julia, this is a... Sorry, hold on. Yeah, if Julia is the last one to show this question, we're going to do it. So anybody else wants to show, or anybody else has any other questions wants to show? Okay. So this one, so x squared plus four y squared equals four, we can write as a as a ellipse. Just like Julia have a picture over here. So how do we write as ellipse? So ellipse has something like a x squared divided by a squared x squared divided by a squared 
plus y square divided by b square equals to one. Right? Then a is horizontal distance of the ellipse from the center. B is the vertical distance of the ellipse to the center. To zero comma zero, to which is this is the center at the origin ellipse. What's the difference between uh, ellipse and a circle? A circle will have x squared plus y squared equals to r squared, right? So with so circle, the coefficient, the number before x squared and the number before y squared are the same. So let's write down that. So we've got x squared plus y squared equals the r squared. That's how we write a circle centered at the origin. We can divide by r squared on both sides. So we have x squared divided by r squared plus y squared divided by r squared equals to 1. Right. So that's the equation for a circle. And this one, when the x squared and the y squared have a different coefficient, we could multiply a squared and b squared, right? So we would write this as b squared x squared plus a squared y squared equals to the ab squared. It's very similar to circle, but it's being skewed. It's being skewed. So Julia has a perfect picture here. So then, so from this one equation, we can write as two functions. Right, we wrote y equals to plus minus the root of 1 minus x squared over 4. But should we do that? Let's see. So we have this, we have this, we have this region. 21a. Let me go back to 21a to make sure the question is like that. 21a. So let me read the whole question for us. Set up the integral for the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the given curves about the specific specified line. Then use your calculator to evaluate the integral correct to five decimal places. Oh, now I understand why you're doing estimation to five decimal places. But usually for calculus, we don't care about the decimal. Okay, we want to keep it as exact, exact value. So our region is enclosed by this equation, x squared plus 4y squared equals 4, which is Julia's picture right here. We have this ellipse. And the region, oops, is inside this. So this is the region. Now we're rotating this region about y equals 2. About y equals 2, the horizontal line. y equals 2. So when we rotate, we get 3D object, right? We get this piece. Get this piece. Let me use a green color. A little bit upwards, so we we are only able to draw a little bit. What's going on? Right. This is a symmetric, right? It's a symmetric piece to this piece. And this piece is on x, you can think is on x, y plane if we think about the 3D object. Right, so this is the x axis. But what's x axis? x axis has another name, y equals to 0, right? y equals to 0. When we rotate over y axis, right, we want to cut vertically. We want to find when we rotate about y equals that y axis, y equals to 2. y equals to 2 is parallel to x axis, right? We want to cut along, what did I was seeing? I was seeing, okay, forget about what I was seeing, uh, what I was seeing. We want to cut along this x axis, right? We want to get the area, we want to add up the area of the circles. Right? We want to add up this circle, the area of this circle, 
this circle, this circle, so on and so forth. Do I make sense? Anybody has any questions so far? When R, when big R is an area between X equals to A, so Ami is writing something on the chat. When R is an area between X equals to A, and B revolve with X axis, then disk where R is bounded by two function top and then below rotate. Oh, okay, Ami is trying to answer uh, Hinnan's question. Hinnan is asking a question, what circles are we talking about? Oh, okay, so you two are making conversations not related to this question, right? Oh, I haven't I haven't talked about the methods right yet. Let's not worry about that. Okay. We will talk about this. So today we won't have time to talk about the washer method or the shell method. So we're going to involve something. So when we talk about washer and disk, this two, yeah, this two is not two different methods. Okay. So washer is to use the disk, use the region as a disk, as, as a rotating part. The next class we'll talk about the shell method. It's another method. So disk and the washer go along with each other. All right. Because disk we're talking about the region. Two two dimension object. And washer we're talking about 3D object. If that makes sense. All right. So Julia, is it okay for now? Yeah, I understand. So the picture you understand, right? Yeah. So now we want to cut, we want to find it. So we have this, we have this circle. But this circle, we have those we want to cut along x axis with infinite many circles. We want to add up the area of all those circles. Right? Does that right. make sense? Yeah. Okay. So now, can you figure out the lower limit, upper limit of x axis? On the x axis? Um, you mean in total of every of the whole? So you see here, three and five is not right, right? So would it be negative one to five? Oh, you're cutting along y actually. You're thinking, I don't know, you know, okay. Or are you it's talking about the x two, axis? Right? You see the x value goes from negative two to two, right? Yeah. Right. So we would have negative two to two. Okay. And then we're cutting along x axis. So this is a pair, right? Mm -hmm. Integration from negative two to on the x axis. It basically means we're cutting x axis from negative two to two infinite many pieces. Okay, now let's figure out the area. So the area sits as an integrand, right? Let's put the pi outside. So we need to figure out. Uh, we need to figure out the outside volume subtract the inside volume. Let's put this way. Big R square minus small r squared. Let's see if this makes sense for you. Yeah. You see, when we rotate, we got this in from negative from one up to three, this inside are hollow, right? Yeah. Inside are empty. But we're only trying to find the volume of this solid piece when we rotate. OK, now, so that's why we have outside volume subtract the inside volume, subtract the hollow. So now, all about figure out big R and small r. Can you tell me what the big R is? The big R is outside, right? Right. And because we're cutting along x axis, right, we want to be able to write a y in terms of x. Um. Would it be the one that we calculated for y? Right. Let's see. Does it see one piece of this? This. Uh, what do we call? Would that be big R? Right. 
Yeah, so then the plus minus square root 1 minus x squared over 4. Right, we, was, we would use these two, right? We would use these two minus it. 2 minus no, this. Um, I'm not sure. It's okay. Draw the picture to convince yourself. I'll still give you a chance to present next time. So your job is to figure out the big R and small R. Yeah, I know we have some time. Yeah. I think I have compiled a review sheet on the blackboard, right? Have I? I've posted. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, the next class, so make sure you start doing the review sheet. And then you still have a presentation. So, you can present the questions on the review sheet. And also, we only have one thing to cover, which is the shell method. The shell method versus the washer method. So, so far, we're just doing washer method. The next class, I'm going to talk about the shell method. Shell method is not, you, know, you don't really have to do it because all the time you can use the washer method. And the washer method is intuitive. It's much easier to understand. Show method, show method is a little bit, but once you understand, it's, very, it's also convenient to use also. Okay, Julia, I'm still, I'm not going to give you full credit for this. So just figure out the big R and small R, okay? Yeah, no problem, thank you. Okay, so you can present next class. All right, uh, anybody has any questions? Yeah, you can we right, you can present the questions on the review sheet to earn presentation credit. Okay, anybody has any question? So everyone presented today, right? Okay, all right. So I see you on Thursday then. Thank you.